What does the Bible tell us about our first parents? And how can we put that together with the discoveries of contemporary science about our ancestry? In this video and the next, we'll be tackling these important questions. We first read about Adam and Eve in chapter 2 of the book of Genesis. This is the second creation account in Genesis, following immediately after the rather different sequence of six days recounted by Genesis chapter 1. As we've discussed in earlier videos, these texts were probably composed by different human authors and then at a later point were redacted to form a single book. These human authors and editors were acting under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and we hold that the sacred text that's come down to us is a part of divine revelation. It's the Word of God, which infallibly communicates to us the truths pertaining to human salvation. The first thing that we should notice about these creation accounts in Genesis is that these texts are not trying to transmit to us a scientific or precise historical account of creation or of human origins. Indeed, if they were trying to do that, we'd have to say that the final editor of Genesis did quite a poor job, since the text gives us two different chronologies side by side. And that should tell us something, namely, that the book of Genesis is revealing something of a different order. As the Word of God, it communicates profound truths, but we should not expect it to yield modern historical or scientific answers to questions it wasn't even addressing. So if we were to ask, when did our first ancestors live? Or did they have non-rational hominid biological ancestors themselves? We would be asking questions that the book of Genesis does not even attempt to answer. Before going further, however, it might be helpful to identify what the text is telling us. Now, there's no way that in a short video we could set forth even a fraction of the rich and deep revelation contained in Genesis, but we can at least identify a few capital points. First of all, God is revealing something about himself. He is the transcendent creator of all things, of the whole cosmos, which he brought forth by his word and which he found to be good. Next, Genesis is telling us something about man. God included human beings in his divine plan, creating them as the pinnacle of the visible and material creation. We have material bodies made up from the dust of the earth. And this makes us unlike angels who are pure spirits. But in another sense, we have a dimension to our being that does not come from below, from earth. God made us in his image and likeness. As St. Thomas Aquinas would later explain, human beings are made in God's image above all because God gave us spiritual souls. That is, he gave us minds with a capacity to know and to love. We are the material creatures, special animals, endowed with reason, who are capable of spiritual acts, and thus of entering into a personal relationship with God himself, transcending what any mere animal is able to do. Genesis also tells us that since he is in the image and likeness of God, God entrusted the earth to man, giving him dominion over it and all the other animals and plants, so that human beings would have a share in God's own providential governance. That is, God grants to the human creature a special role as God's steward over creation, a steward who exists in profound communion with God. This brings us to another central truth we find in Genesis. Human beings were created in friendship with God. We'll have more to say on this original grace or original justice in a later video, but for now, it's enough to point out that in the beginning, God placed man in what Genesis depicts as a harmonious garden. Man was first created in a state of true happiness and harmony with God, and therefore also with the rest of the things God created. Yet another category of truths we learn from Genesis concerns the relations between man and woman, husband and wife, named by the text Adam and Eve. We hear that it was not good for the man to be alone. Human beings are not meant to be solitary creatures. Rather, God made us male and female. He made us with a divinely willed complementarity. 
Both man and woman are fully human, fully in the image and likeness of God, sharing the same dignity, but as complements and companions to each other. As Adam exclaims when he sees Eve for the first time, this one at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Genesis immediately goes on to connect this to the truth about marriage, which God intended in his original plan to be an indissoluble union between a man and a woman that gives rise to children and hence to the whole human family. So the family too is a part of God's original plan. It's in the context of this loving and permanent union between man and woman that new life is intended by God to come into the world. That original family, that first family, was supposed to be in an ongoing relationship of perfect communion and friendship with God so that their new offspring would also be born into this marvelous communion. It's at this point that Genesis tells us something went very wrong. And this is the next key truth that the book of Genesis reveals. Despite having been created in grace, our first parents disobeyed God and fell from his grace. And as a result, there followed the catastrophic consequences of exile, and they became prone to illness, suffering, and death. Having disrupted their harmony with God, they experienced disorder within themselves and no longer live in harmony with the rest of creation or with each other and they transmit this disorder to their descendants. Their children are not born into the garden, but instead inherit a fallen human nature. Of course, there's much more that we could say, but this at least gives a very brief sketch of the profound truths revealed in the book of Genesis. It doesn't purport to answer scientific or historical questions, but in our next video, we'll take up how to understand recent scientific investigations of human origins in light of the important theological truths revealed by the Bible. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas, and don't forget to like and share with your friends because it matters what you think.